Hey everyone, Stefan here again from Salford and Manchester Gaming Haven. Welcome to another video where I show you how to paint minis to an acceptable standard is the caveat. Uh, today I want to talk to you about some of the sort of basic to intermediate techniques that you'll need to acquire if you want to develop your painting. I also want to talk to you a little bit about some colours and effects and I'm specifically going to talk today about layering and about how to work with metallics. So these videos are generally going to be aimed at the beginner to intermediate painter. Very briefly, I've been painting on and off for about 30 years and I've been a commission painter for about three years now. So I like to consider myself to be more of an advanced painter, uh, potentially. But I'm very conscious of the fact that making that leap from a beginner where you have techniques that you're comfortable with to really pushing and acquiring some of the more advanced techniques that's really going to develop your painting. That's a very difficult step. It was for me and it is for a lot of people that I talk to at Salford and Manchester Gaming Haven at our events and online as well. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about layering. Layering is a technique whereby we build up a color to give it depth, to give it texture so that it's not flat. And it should be used in place of dry brushing for everything except things that actually need dry brushing. So just to give you an example of some of the things that I would normally still dry brush, I'm just gonna hold up um, this base to the camera. So you can see this has a kind of stone effect and this really needs to be dry brushed to produce that effect. But other than that, these miniatures that are on display for me to show you uh, some of the techniques today have no other dry brushing on them and will have no other dry brushing on them. So I want to talk to you a little bit today about layering and I'm going to do it using the example of gold. Now, the first step when you are painting any project, of course, is to build the miniature, assemble the miniature, clean up the miniature. I'm not going to show you that today because I've skipped ahead. I'm going to show you how to build up color. So the first thing you need to do once you've assembled your miniature is prime it. And your primer is really, it's a personal choice. Um, depending what it is you're going to paint will obviously dictate the color of your primer. I generally tend to use Citadel paints pretty much almost exclusively with the exception of one or two technical things. Citadel paints uh, are really, there's not a huge amount of difference between Citadel paints from Games Workshop, Army Painter paints and Vallejo paints. It's just obviously most painters find a paint set or a series of paints that they're comfortable with and I've been using Citadel, uh, Citadel paints for so long that I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with them. And I also like the system uh, insofar as if I paint a particular base color, then I know that it's gonna work with two to three washes and that's gonna work with a certain number of layers to produce the color that I want. And it's just a, a system that I'm very familiar with. So once we've primed our uh, miniatures and I've primed them using Chaos Black from Games Workshop, as you can see here, then we want to give them their uh, base coat. Now, because these miniatures are liberators and they're almost entirely gold, or the vast majority of the miniatures is gold, I went ahead and base coated them also using a spray. So I use Retributor Armor from Games Workshop. Now, obviously, if the miniature you're painting isn't quite so gold and you want to, but you still want to paint gold, then it does also come obviously in a pot so that you can brush on rather than spray on. Uh, if you need to be a little bit more precise. I also use this if there are any mistakes at any point. Obviously, you need a pot. Even if you are going to use a spray paint to base it, you need the pot retributor armor just to tidy up any mistakes you might make or any issues with the spray, of course. So the first thing we do is we base coat our miniature. And retributor armor is quite a pale gold. Hopefully that's showing here. Now, at the moment, obviously, there's no real texture to this gold. It's just a straight up base coat. It doesn't have a great deal of depth to it, but it is nice and shiny, and it's a shiny pale gold. So the first thing we need to do once we have our base to give it some te texture is to wash it, to give it some shade. Now, if I'm working with Retributor Armor, the shade that I would most likely use will be Reichland Flesh Shade, which is a wash. You could also use Agrax Earth Shade, which is slightly darker, uh, and nowhere near as much red. Or you could use Seraphim Sepia, which is obviously a sepia, it's a yellowy color. And each one of those, although they're quite browny, they have slightly different 
tints to them. So hopefully you can see here, this is Raglan Flesh Shade, which is very red, and obviously I very often use it to, to shade flesh, but you can also use it to shade gold and it'll add in some color. Given that Retributor Armor is such a cold gold, such a pale gold, this is a good way of adding some depth and warmth to it. Agrax Earth Shade, by contrast, is a straight neutral brown and there's very little warmth to that. There's no real red to it. So it's going to just give you straight up depth and darkness and shade, but it isn't going to change the color very much and it isn't going to add warmth. And Seraphim Sepia, as you can see, is kind of quite yellow. And this will add a sickly color to a lot of things, but it'll also add a kind of aged color and a little bit of a yellow tint. The other gold, now I'm using Retributor Armor, as I've said, so this is the base color. The other gold that Games Workshop do, which is an entirely different gold, and I will talk about it briefly today, is if you use Balthazar Gold as your base. Now you can see, hopefully, if I put the two up to the camera, that they are very, very different golds. Balthazar Gold here on your left, Retributor Armor on your right. Balthazar Gold much darker, a little bit browner, Retributor Armor a little bit more red and yellow, a little bit lighter. So it produces a, a much paler gold. So once we've added the shade, what we'll end up with is a miniature like this. So now you can see this has had the right clan flesh shade and you can see there's a little bit of depth, a little bit of shade to the miniature. Um, you can see there's a lot more definition to the color already. And all we've done there is washed it with right clan flesh shade all over the whole mini and that's ready to be layered. Now, if we're sticking with Retributor Armor as our base, our first layer is going to be Auric Armor Gold, which is a nice pale flat gold. If our base coat were Balthazar Gold, so the slightly darker redder gold, then our uh, mid-tone would be Gehenna's Gold. So again, you can see quite a big difference between the two golds. So Aurikama Gold on the left, Gehenna's Gold on the right. Aurikama Gold goes with Retributor Armor, Gehenna's Gold goes with Balthazar Gold. Okay? Once we've applied that layer, what we'll generally end up with is something that looks a little bit more like this. Now this hasn't been done completely, but hopefully you can see on the chest pieces, we've started to lighten that color back up Okay, using the layering technique, which I'll show you. And that color is starting to have a little bit more gold and a little bit more depth to it. Once we've done that, we want to add our first highlight. Now, if we're sticking with Retributor Armor, as I have on these miniatures, our first highlight will be Liberator Gold. Okay, which is very, very light pale gold, as you can see. If we'd had Gehenna's Gold, Balthazar Gold as our base, Gehenna's Gold as our layer, then our highlight will become our Rikama gold. Okay, but either way you can see very light gold. This is Liberator gold on your right and our Rikama gold on your left. Okay, and that should give us a lot more depth, a lot more color to the gold. You can see now it's starting to have a lot of shine to it. And it's nice and crisp. It isn't just flat, but it is starting to reflect the light in the way that gold does. And then the final thing we need to do with any white metal and indeed any color is to add a zenith or highlight, a top highlight. Sometimes you might call this a spot highlight. Generally speaking, we call it a zenith or highlight. If you're working with liberators as I am and you're working from Retributor Armor all the way up, then your final highlight, your zenith or highlight will be Stormhost Silver. If you're working with Balthazar Gold as your base, then your final highlight could be Runefang Steel. You could also use Stormhost Silver as well. It is a little paler. I'll put them up uh, for you to see. So Stormhost Silver on the left, Runefang Steel on the right. And that should give you, and you can look at the final product, that should just be at the point where the light gleams, glints off the gold. My dog's quite happy about it. If you look at gold, and if you, if you were to Google it on Google Images, you'll see that where the light hits it at any corner at its sharpest point, it reflects back a white light rather than uh, a yellow light. So it reflects back a white metallic color rather than a yellow metallic color. So your zenithal highlight for gold should be a silver or a steel color. With that, I'm gonna pause the video and then I'll come back and I'm gonna show you how to layer up from our shade, uh, layer this up with our Rikama Gold, and then I'm going to show you how to highlight that with Liberator Armor in the next stage. Okay, so I'll be back shortly.